There are few rallies more prestigious or glamorous than Monte Carlo, and this is where the World Rally Championship begins. It starts in Monaco, then heads up onto Alpine Roads further north before dropping back down into the Principality. It's run entirely on tarmac, but snow and ice always make for a few surprises. The oldest event in the WRC calendar is the one the top teams really want to win. They call Sweden the land of the midnight sun, where temperatures drop as low as minus 20. This is where the World Rally Championship moves to next. The conditions in the Scandinavian forests mean the cars need studded tyres to cope with layers of snow and ice lying on top of gravel. It may be the coldest rally of them all, but the competition is as hot as ever. When the World Rally Championship arrives at the most westerly country in Europe, the entire population takes time off to watch. The Rally of Portugal is run mainly on gravel roads by the coast. On every straight and turn, drivers pass a sea of spectators. They pack the roadside in their thousands, often spilling onto the road itself. Portugal may not have turned out many rally champions, but this event is a definite winner. After three punishing rounds, the next venue for the World Rally Championship is Spain. A country famous for its fiestas throws open its arms to welcome the WRC Carnival. The stages are all on tarmac roads around the Ret de Mar on the Costa Brava. The rally is held in the Catalan region, where the locals' pride and passion will be matched only by the drivers' will to win. The WRC now crosses the Atlantic to another Spanish-speaking country. Argentina offers almost every kind of terrain a competitor can face, from the vast, dusty wilderness to mountain roads that snake up into the clouds. It takes a special kind of person to survive out on the open pampas, and it will take a certain kind of driver to do the same in the Rally of Argentina. teams now mingle with the tourists in Cyprus. Welcome to one of the slowest rallies in the competition. But as speeds come down, so the heat rises. The gravel route takes it out of the resort of Limassol and up into the Trudos Mountains. That's where the speeds drop, which means higher temperatures inside the car and long hours at the wheel. For the drivers, this will be no holiday. The competition's at the halfway point and already many have fallen by the wayside. And now the WRC heads to Greece, the land of myth and legend. 
The rally's tough reputation comes from the hard, unforgiving landscape. Temperatures can be as punishing as Kenya, and all around are boulders easily capable of ruining more than a driver's chances. Modern day heroes are made or broken on the Acropolis rally. As if tarmac, snow and gravel aren't punishment enough, now comes the exhausting heat of Kenya. To many, this 50-year-old competition represents rallying in its purest form. The cars cover vast distances across hard, open terrain, and it's an immense physical challenge. Obstacles to overcome range from flash floods to wandering wildlife. They call it the safari rally, but are the drivers the hunters or the prey? Finland is the fastest rally of them all. The 1,000 lakes is more of a sprint than a marathon, like a Grand Prix on gravel. The challenge for drivers is handling the undulating bumps or yumps that rise out of the road. They litter every stage of the rally, so it's no surprise that only a handful of foreigners have ever come first. You don't have to be finished to win here, but it helps. For the WRC teams who are mainly based in Europe, the rally of New Zealand means a journey to the other side of the world. When they get there, they find some of the best gravel driving in the entire championship. The surface on the North Island ranges from twisty public roads to fast forest tracks covered with loose debris. It may be a long way, but New Zealand is worth the trip. With just three rallies left before the end of the championship, Italy is the venue for the San Remo Rally. It unites many of the factors that make up successful WRC events, fabulous roads, wildly enthusiastic crowds and an incredible backdrop. It runs out of the Riviera Resort into the mountains and back again. The stages are on tarmac, but bad weather can leave them with a carpet of dirt, leaves and gravel. With the end in sight, no one can take San Remo for granted. They say on the tour of Corsica that the only straight bit of tarmac on the island is the runway to Jaxio Airport. You can certainly believe it if you drive on the winding roads banked by perilous sheer drops that cross this Mediterranean island. On paper, it's quite a short event and held entirely on tarmac. But the road surface is coarse and bumpy, and don't forget those mountain drops. Words like unforgiving are often applied to Corsica with good reason. If the WRC drivers have any energy left as they enter the penultimate event of the season, then they'll need it for Rally Australia. It's a relative newcomer born in 1988, but has quickly earned the team's respect. The 
route is fast and slippery. The gravel covering the road has been compared to ball bearings and cars need specialist tyres to tackle it. The youngest WRC event offers a unique challenge. So this is it. After 13 events that would finish off most mere mortals, the WRC survivors have made it to the final rally, Britain. After the extremes of heat and cold in countries as diverse as Kenya and Sweden, it may seem an anti-climax. But the truth is very different. The Rally of Great Britain runs on private roads around Wales. The surface ranges from tarmac to gravel. And when the British weather turns bad, pure mud. And at the end of it, not just a rally winner, but a champion of the world. Welcome to one of the most demanding and challenging motorsport competitions on the planet, the World Rally Championship. Take some of the best drivers in the world, add some of the most incredible cars and mix in some tarmac, gravel and ice. To get about first across the line, the race in the WRC is against the toughest rival of all, time. Each rally is broken into stages with points for the fastest times taken to complete the overall event. The cars themselves carry the names of some familiar family motors. But under the skin, their purpose-built rally machines with four-wheel drive, turbos galore and horsepower counted in the hundreds. They'll need it too with conditions across the championship ranging from sub-zero Scandinavian forests to the overpowering heat and dust of Kenya and Greece. With the World Rally Championship, it's not just a question of winning, but surviving.